Welcome everyone to That's Effin' Weird. Tonight we have some super cool hosts and some crazy stories. Bam, done. <laughs> there we go. That's from this. See? That I'm your first host, Clark. I'm your second host, Seth. And oh, and we have we have uh, Joe with us today. I'm so sorry. I, I was expecting Lily to go, but she she oh, introduced so herself sorry. already. No, you're good. We, it's it's fine. You know what's weird is we haven't done intros in like yeah four episodes so we're we're oh, rusty wow. but but there we go <laughs> all right so today we're gonna talk about some ghost stories clark has some joe has one and i think i've got a couple uh lily do you have any ghost stories the personal ones i do not i've never had any paranormal experiences myself but i'm an avid reader so i'm always interested to see what others have seen felt um so mm. yeah Okay. All right. Well, um, Clark, you go ahead because uh, I'm uh, I'm still like remembering mine. Yeah. So I have uh, I have a few, honestly. So um, I think I've mentioned it before on the podcast, but I used to give ghost tours uh, in Charleston, South Carolina, and it's one of the most haunted cities in America. It's usually in the always in the top five. Um, and so I have some like weird experiences that happen there. And actually a lot of them weren't necessarily on tours. Uh, some of them were, but um, I like to, I guess, uh, present them from like least creepy to most unexplainable. <laughs> Cause I'm, I am a skeptic at heart. I, I love paranormal stuff. Ghosts is my, uh, it's, it's just like kind of where my heart lies is I think with history, um, legends and mystery are kind of intertwined in that. And therefore that's like my love for it. Um, so I guess there's no other way than just going into like some of the weird things I've seen. Um, there was a tour one time where I was a, um, I wasn't actually the tour guide. I was the, uh, the second, the like, I, I guess you would call it like the assistant, but I was really there to observe. And um, the tour guide that was there uh, is, is a guy named Thomas. And um, he was giving a tour and we were going to a place called the, uh, the Provost Dungeon in Charleston, South Carolina. And this is basically the basement level of the old exchange building. Um, the old exchange building, the actual the actual foundation of the building goes back to the actual original half moon battery that was built in Charleston, like when it was settled in the 16, like sixties. So, um, between 1660s and 1680s, this is like one of the oldest places you can actually go in America, honestly, other than like St. Augustine, Florida, some of the Spanish settlements. So as far as like English settled America, this is one of the oldest places you can go. Um, and it is below sea level. So uh, we get seasonal flooding there. Um, water just comes in. It's tidal flooding is what they call it. You can be walking down Market Street. I've literally been eating dinner in a restaurant and it'd be completely dry. And then when we leave, it is shin deep water when you walk out of a restaurant, like in the middle of downtown Charleston. So it's it's crazy how the tidal flooding works. Is going to come into, um, uh, I guess it's going to be important here in a second uh, in the story. So during this tour, we go to the Provost Dungeon, um, which is the basement of this building. So they call it the Provost Dungeon because it was an original prison, you can call it, like a, a makeshift prison. Um, it was used for uh, a lot of like pirates that came in the Golden Age of Piracy. Um, Steed Bonnet and his crew were held there. Well, Steed Bonnet wasn't actually held there, but his crew was held there. Steed Bonnet got, uh, he kind of got a better deal <laughs> and didn't have to spend his time down in the provost. But um, uh, it is literally a brick vaulted ceiling kind of place with chains and just people are held down there. Um, and it's because it's below sea level, whenever the tidal flooding would happen, uh, the water would come in and they would just 
leave the people to their own devices. And this went all the way through the American Revolution. So a lot of political prisoners, um, a lot of American prisoners, because Charleston was actually taken by the British in the American Revolution in 1780. Um, a lot of prisoners were held down there. Um, so it was, a, it was a place that you just didn't want to be in. Um, plus rats and stuff like that, and just all the nastiness. Um, well, we were doing a tour one night, and uh, everything was going fine. We go into uh, into the building, and and you can look up actually on you can YouTube um, this place. There's there's plenty of videos of actually uh, people walking you through this like provost dungeon. So you can look at the old exchange building in Charleston, South Carolina, and find it and see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but there is a there's a drop off where you can see the original seawall where it was actually built, like where the original actual seawall for Charleston, South Carolina was actually built. And there's always groundwater that's coming up from the bottom. Um, and like it'll, it'll never go away because it's just like seeping up from the ground because we're below sea level at that point. So, um, so we're doing this tour. And the guide is actually, uh, he's doing his whole song and dance. And he's like, hey, this is where pirates and, you know, pirates and American Revolution and all that stuff. Um, when you go past this, like, chain from the elevator, basically, into this part of the Provost Dungeon, um, there was a family that was there. And they had been fine up to this point on the tour. We'd already been to several stops on the tour, talking about ghosts and talking about crazy things. Okay, cool. We get down in this dungeon, and everything's fine, and this one little girl walks up to the point where there is the groundwater that comes up from the bottom, and she starts freaking out. She starts crying, starts screaming, and she's like, literally runs to her dad and she goes, I don't want to be here. This is where the people drown. Oh my God. And <laughs> so of course I, a kid, of course a kid. Yeah. Right. Of course, a kid. Of, course of course, it's gotta be a kid. And it wasn't just, it was a young girl and it was a young boy. And like I said, they were like, I don't know. I, I'm terrible at judging ages. It's seven between five, seven years old. Um, uh, and the boy starts crying immediately after the girl starts crying. I don't know if he starts crying because she freaked out, but he starts like crying and freaking out and everything. And he starts just repeating her. He's just like, no, I don't want to drown. I don't want to drown. That's terrifying. <laughs> and so it's like, uh, that family's got to go. <laughs> no. So, um, so yeah, the, and and they had not they were not from the area. They were from Maryland, I believe, is what they told us, but like it was it was crazy. Like they're down there she sees the water and immediately starts freaking out. And there are like animatronics and stuff down there for like but it's not just pirates. It's like stuff for the history of the entire building. Do so they move? Yeah, they move, but they weren't at oh, that. Oh, that's freaky. They don't, they don't do it at night. Like it's it's part of a, like a daytime yeah. tour thing. Um but, you know what? Um, I was on board with the little kid being a medium and seeing dead people, but that's where I draw the line. This no, is a no go for me. What's funny is those um those animatronics and stuff are way away. Like they're not even within eyesight of where she was, like where the where the groundwater is and everything. So it's not mm. like she saw something that freaked her out. It's not like she saw something right. like out of the corner of her eye. There was nothing like she just saw oh. it's just a little bit of sand. And a little bit of water and an old brick wall. That is all you see there. And she she just went crazy and was like, I don't want to be here. This is where people drowned. Wow. <laughs> and it was like That's insane. Okay. That's it's like insane. we haven't even got into the dungeon yet. Like <laughs> what, we, what we jokingly call the dungeon is not mm -hmm. really, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, that was like the first real like okay well this is weird uh, kids see things <laughs> so wow. that's that's my first one of these uh, I guess creepy stories. <laughs> Does anyone uh, anyone want to break up my uh, stories with their own? I don't. I, I've been poking around in my family and my friends to see if anyone had had 
a spooky experience and mm -hmm. I've been just not really been lucky. No one has told me a tale of seeing a, a shadow, you know, at the corner of their uh, of their eye, but I've been looking, I've been asking, I've been inquiring, but nothing. Um if I can just tell about what usually gets me when I read online or listen to podcasts or things like that. Um like you said previously, Clark, it's the little things, the little short stories and experiences that you can't really make sense of. And even if you tried, it just, it, it doesn't make sense. It just gives you a little chill. Um, it can be someone that had, has passed away, maybe, and uh, you see someone that suspiciously, look, suspiciously looks like them. Um, or maybe a place that's usually deserted and you hear something or feel a presence uh, that's usually what gets me online mm. sorry i don't have much to contribute but uh i'm really really excited about ghost stories <laughs> no 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 problem uh, i'll all right i'll do mine mm -hmm. uh it has to do okay so stop me if i've told this story to a few people online so if you guys have heard it just stop me i mean it stop me all right all right okay. so i would okay, i would just stop uh, it right now stop it <laughs> <laughs> I uh I was okay this was 2000 this was when this was the the Bush Gore election night mm -hmm. uh so um uh, my, my my parents uh live in an old house uh there is uh it it it's got a lot of history and and all of this stuff just like uh having friends over uh, was uh, very tedious for sleepovers because uh, everybody would like start crying and like call their mom and and they would oh, never no. like stay the night most of the time there was a few uh, exceptions but mm -hmm. most most kids that I knew were terrified of the house that I grew up in so I uh, the election night I what 99 1999 2000 what, when it, whenever it was that right when they were doing it in the hanging chads uh, they were uh, the election night was going on and on and on and uh my folks were going to bed so their room it, there's like this step down where there's like this dressing room and it has like pull out couch and a tv so they went into the next room to go to bed uh uh and they were like okay it's bedtime and i was supposed to go to bed and i but i i i um i made it i was like look this is a historic event i just want to stay up late i was like this is a historic event i want to stay up and watch come on come on and they let me which is rare <laughs> So I, I I was watching them going back and forth on all the newscasters and they were in Florida and blah, blah, blah. And um, I, so the the room I'm in is part of an addition upstairs. It's it's an addition to the house. The original house is L shaped. And so technically where I was was like um, wasn't anything. The lower level, it was like a big porch. And then there was a, there was like a, a, a kind of a walkway. The only thing on the second floor was a walkway that connected the two L parts. Um, so the step up to their bedroom was old house, uh, uh, early 1800s. And then down below was just new stuff. Um, so I'm in the new room. But the hallway that goes off to the old section, it, 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 there's another door. And it just goes straight off. And it was dark. And it's a, just a hallway. But um, the only supernatural experience I've had it was a figure like a shadowy figure that just stood in the hallway and stared at me um it wasn't cloaked nothing nothing like specific like that it was just a shadowy humanoid figure standing in the hallway watching me and i was struck with terror i grew up in this house i've never really afraid of anything like that kind of n n spooky stuff didn't really bother me growing up and uh but I had absolute terror. Like I just stared and watched it as it was staring at me and uh, the TV was still going. And I just like, I don't, I don't remember. I just like tried to go back to sleep and ignore it, but it was there and it just stayed there um, until I believe I started screaming for my folks to wake up and they were like, Oh, it was a dream, but it wasn't a dream. Like I, I was mm -hmm. not dreaming. I remember it vividly to this day uh and and yeah so that that's my tale uh uh what like i don't remember it disappearing i don't rem i mm -hmm. just it was just i like yelled for them they came in and it was gone and i was telling them about it and they did not believe me but did that shadow ever come back no no, no? i've never seen it since 
Um, um, you said that they were, or it was maybe watching you. Could you feel their gaze or maybe you saw their eyes? I did not see the eyes. Uh, it was just, I don't know. It, I just, for some reason, knew it was looking at me. And no eyes, no defining characteristics outside of a like a humanoid shadow in the hall. Um, oh. I don't remember when, like, it wasn't like while I was looking, it just disappeared. It was like one of the times when I, like, tried to ignore it and then, like, yelled for them. And then it, it was, like, gone. Um, but that's a good question. Um, no, I just assumed, I guess. But I, I, the, what's w really weird for me is being mm -hmm. like frozen in terror. Like that, I don't think has happened before or after since then. Like that fight, flight, or freeze. So that right. that happened, um, and just weird. Uh, it's just so vivid, and that's the only paranormal thing I have out of my life. <laughs> um, I've got like other people close to me. Uh, yeah. that that have said this and that like later on that was like 1999 2000 whenever the election night was and then um i had a friend that at in high school years later that uh complained of a similar thing he was not one to like make up stories and joke like this he was like just not that kind of guy and he never mm -hmm. denied it he never said it was a joke but he said uh candidly to me that there's a guy that will come in his uh, bedroom and sit in the corner at night and just watch him sleep. And, uh, and he, he, that's, and I want to say he smoked or something. He said something <laughs> about them. Okay. Like the guy would sit in the corner and smoke. Uh, Such but an it was odd a detail. Yeah. It was like a man dressed uh, and then just like sat in the corner of his room and just watched him sleep and it and he said it like so matter of fact like yeah this happens like uh, most of the time uh and uh i think i told alex this on a episode that's never aired and i uh the joke was uh it was just like his weird uncle trying to find a place to smoke <laughs> or his dad was like oh, finally she's asleep i can go 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 get my marbles <laughs> right <laughs> but Gosh. yeah weird stuff like that um I know somebody, I won't say who, that lives very close to Johnny Cash's old place that the Bee Gees burnt down. And um, there's a lot of weird stuff that happens in that kind of uh, neighborhood. There was like um, there was like a really bad storm recently and a, a girl died tragically. Uh, oh, no. Recently, there was a, a prized uh a uh, dog that disappeared and uh and if you if if this tells you anything about that area they had like search parties like they hired search parties to like mm -hmm. look for the dog uh the the theory the prevailing it was like an award-winning dog or something the prevailing theory is that it it drowned in the uh the hendersonville old hickory lake it's the same lake but that water um now i have uh i have partied on that lake before and the shoreline it's not complicated to get up on like it's a muddy weird lake but it's like i don't buy that i i think it was probably abducted but the search dogs keep going to the edge of the water and mm -hmm. i just to just if a dog fell in it's pretty easy to find a way to just it, it's it's gradual I, I i don't see that um but yeah, there's there's a whole lot of uh, stories about that area, and because they believe that a lot of that stuff was built on Indian burial ground, um, uh, so they have like you know their their local lore about that, um, and then and then uh, my last story is 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 kind of a two for one. So it was like it's it's a story that is real, but the story that was told to me in this real story is fake. So sorry to spoiler alert. Um, uh, there is uh, very close to me a cemetery that in the 80s, like uh, my sisters would like go to like it was like a the high schooler, you know, kids would go and like smoke in the cemetery. And it was it was uh, pretty well known amongst the teenagers. It was in the middle of nowhere. It was like what you had to like trek to go go to it. Um, but my sister took me uh, when I was like 12 something like that 
and I remember it. It was a uh, dry stack. So the walls of the cemetery were dry stacked. It was 1800s graves, so pretty old. Um, there were family plots. So there were some stones that were, that we're talking large stones. We're talking like, well, now like like a cube of stone, like this in, in, in diameter. Um, and each side had a family member. So they would be buried in like the form of a cross, essentially. Um, and then that plot would be surrounded by dry stacked uh, uh, rock. Uh, to mark all the different plots. And so there were, there was so old. I don't think there was that much grave robbing going on. Um, there's people said that, Oh yeah, that probably people were rummaging through graves, but there were a lot of holes right next to the uh, gravestones. And what I think in the area I'm at, I think that the boxes just collapsed and you have sinkholes. I, I, I don't, it didn't, my memory, it doesn't strike me as like a grave robbing scenario. Uh, there wouldn't be much left anyway. But um, so anyway, while I was there, uh, uh, they told me this story about the golden hand. And uh, and I don't know if anyone's familiar with it. I barely remember it. Uh, it's it's about a woman. And um, th there's a there's a golden hand that uh, like it's basically the story of what what it. Uh, it follows, but without any uh, fucking in it, and uh, and because you know, <laughs> well, that's, well, that's not... boring. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a, but it was a golden hand that uh, chased you around, and uh, and when the woman thought she was safe, she kept hearing knocking in her closet, and opened it up, and the golden hand was there, and it strangled her. Anyway, that was my. Uh, it, I'm I'm also that what that I was twelve. I'm I'm like piecing together a, a elaborate story that I I can't quite remember that's why i wanted everyone to go first but <laughs> yeah that that was that was it that's all my spooky tales locally oh wait no wait i've got one more i've got one Do more tell. so there was a there was a lady that um i rented a a, a house to and um she she knew nothing all right let me give you the backstory there was a house uh i knew the people there um uh the the uh her uh man I, i'll just say his name i won't say the lady's name uh the um uh bill his name was bill and uh the lady is still living so i'll leave her out of it uh bill was a really nice guy i knew him uh when i was younger and um uh he he passed away a couple years ago in in the house and uh it was natural causes the guy was like mid 90s like he it, it was just natural uh the hospice was there it was it was nice and easy and um uh so uh bill passed on and then um uh later on uh new people started renting it and then the lady came up to me and was like hey and not knowing anything about this she she was like hey is uh did anyone pass away in the house? And I was like, cause, cause my radar for like, you know, I, I have a bullshit meter and, and I'm real careful. Yeah. I want, I want to hear this stuff so bad, but uh, I'm, I'm careful. Anyway, mm -hmm. she was like, uh, she was like, there's a presence uh, in, in the house. And I initially told her no, because I completely forgot that that happened. It was a very low key thing. Um, and uh, I was like, no, she was like, there's a presence in the house uh, every now and then we'll like look down the hall and someone goes into the, the, uh, a man will walk in, like out of the hall and into the bedroom to where we can't see him. And she's, and she was like saying, I'm sent I'm like, like in a medium capacity sensitive to these kinds of things. And, and, uh, but yeah, there's a presence here. And I was like, uh, now that you mention it, uh, 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 there was a guy named Bill that I knew that did die in that house. And, uh, uh, so I, 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 as she was like, oh, well then she like really leaned into it, but it was just odd that she, if she, there was like all these similarities, uh, with that, the real, the story that I know. And then what she was telling me, I was like, interesting, mm. but yeah, she like, um, she would say there would be like uh, kind of country, old country music playing at night when, despite there not being anything. Bill was in a, a bluegrass band back in the day, like the '60s. 
uh, like stuff like that. Weird little details to know yeah, about. Yeah, weird details. So yeah, I don't know what that is. Uh, she she there's other things about her that strike me as like uh odd, like the lady that's telling me this. Um, but she said all that stuff, and that was very intriguing to me. So I'm not gonna just throw it all out. It was just interesting. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. The, I, I, the... I I have. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No. Go ahead. No, no. It's just like the the medians. Uh, the way that they uh, it's hard to know, right? The way that they talk. Yeah. Um. It's like in a vague a, a, a vagueness, but it's kind of like horoscopes sometimes, where it, it's yeah. like it's just vague enough that you're like you draw the connections for yourself, but yeah. I definitely I know. had experience with medians and stuff. It's hard to it's hard to say because some of it's so convincing. Yeah, I know. I want I want there. I just wish there was a little less bullshit out there. Oh man, it would be so much easier to navigate. But that's just the way things are. Uh, last thing I will say, uh, uh, and then Joe, you take it away. But um, I do have a fond memory of Bill in various stages as in his life uh, outside. Uh, in in a bathrobe, which this works. So he would he would be mm -hmm. watching the ground like this with a pickaxe in another hand, and he would be just like watching it. And this was up until like a few months before he passed. Like he was just this old guy staring at the ground with a pickaxe in his in his robe and not much else. And um, uh, what his thing was is he hated moles, and he would he would stare at the ground. And we have kind of a mole problem around me. But he would stare at the ground until he, he could see some movement near where a mole mound was. And then he would just, like, kill the sucker. <laughs> <laughs> but this is just, like, this guy with a pickaxe, like, murdering moles in the yard. He's just terrifying, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, uh, I get to the point where that's all I have left. <laughs> <laughs> just like, no, my man. morning routine is staring yeah. at the ground, wait, just waiting. <laughs> It's like the opposite of Groundhog Day or something. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. He, it's, it's he was Groundhog ruthless. Day, the horror movie. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his wife Every told day me is that they Groundhog Day. <laughs> his wife told me that there was like a pile by the fence that they referred to as the Mole Cemetery. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, damn. <sighs> so yeah, he was very proactive, apparently. But uh, but. Joe, you take it away. Do you have any any good stories? Yeah, um, that's interesting. You when you're telling that story about um, your election day ghost, the mm -hmm. ghost from your house when you grew up, um, about the shadow. Um, I have a question for you. Just before I tell my yeah. story, is um, when you say shadow, do do you mean like like the kind that you see on a wall, or do you mean like a disturbance in like the visual field a more of a disturbance in the visual field so not like a casting shadow not mm -hmm. like uh, uh defined lines like that uh the best way i can describe it you know like um a gradation between like black gray and like just like that those shades of colors like if you're like on photoshop or something mm -hmm. like there's a gradient or in a photo there's like uh, an outline and then like there's a gradient of the colors uh, uh. that that's more like it or the actually i like the way you put the disturbance in a visual field yeah, yeah. i mean it was like, would it be it, like 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 predator like you know no no not like no. not like that um not like stuff behind it was warping uh but mm -hmm. no it was more it was just a a dark oh, man it sounds stupid to put it like this but like um a shadowy figure and and like uh okay have you seen someone standing uh in like fog with like a light source behind them mm. kind of like that like like there's right, right. something there you, the light source is behind them so you don't see any features details yeah yeah, yeah no. it's just like a cut out gradient darkness but it was darker than the rest of the hallway that that's I, right right that i do remember can I, can I add an additional question of like is this something like when you see something out of a peripheral or like something you see straight no. on no straight on absolutely okay. straight on I, I yeah. Just to do that. All right. yeah no because uh my experience is uh similar in terms of uh 
like the visual aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 then and in your in your case, um, you weren't like already spooked out, right? You it like just kind of uh. No, no, I was, I, when I saw it, that's the, when the terror, like I wasn't like watching a scary movie or something. This, I was Mm -hmm. watching the election news and, uh, (laughs) and then saw that. And then just, I remember like the, like the, that back of your, like the, yeah, what goose pimples, whatever they call them. It was just like that kind of feeling all over. It was awful. Right. Right. No, I, I have a, I just was checking just because uh, I, I had something similar. Um, this was, uh, let's see, it would have been after the election. <laughs> it was probably like uh, 20, 2004. Okay. 2004 or five. And um, I had started working down in uh, the what is now kind of like considered like sort of like the arch district, the sort of the, the revitalized downtown here in Honolulu. Okay. So they, they have them all over it. You have some old buildings, uh, artists move in and, um, and then those places become bars and cafes and restaurants and stuff like that. So down here, it's a, it's a mix of the downtown area and the Chinatown area. They're kind of they were all they're all pretty much right next to each other, and um, a few of my friends we we were um, we were opening up a club. I I should say like we were part of a team that was opening up a club, and my peers, some of the promoters, and then me as a graphic designer, um, we decided we should get our own office because previous to that we were kind of all in the same office. The people that are opening the club and. And we we kind of wanted to have our own like f- free freedom to not be like just like in the office with the 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 people that own the club, um, which was also like a theater, like um uh, for like uh, film festivals and stuff. So anyway, we find these uh, offices in a cheap old hotel, and this hotel, um, it's called the Blaisdell Hotel, um, and uh. Blaisdell is uh, kind of an old family out here. Um, anyway, it's an old hotel. Like this thing was built in not super old, uh, but you know, old for Hawaii. Uh, mm-hmm. It's uh, in the early nineteen hundreds. So before the, yeah. before the, um, like just after the, uh, what do you call the overthrow? Mm-hmm. Just, just I man, before statehood. So this is early for for here anyway it's a it's a it's got like a one of those manual powered manual cranked elevators you get in yeah the cage opens up and then the man has to like use the crank so it's old like that and um we had just moved in to to it and there's been people working in there like uh accountants and lawyers and stuff they'd had their offices in there um, but we, we were able to catch like three offices all adjacent to each other. And um, we're just setting up, you know, maybe we're in, we've been in, we we signed the lease a few days ago, uh, maybe even a week. And now, now we're deciding to paint it, get it all ready. And we're in there painting and, you know, we're in our 20s, early 20s. So like, you know, we're not, <laughs> we're, we're, we're screwing off like most of the time, you know, like, oh, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's, oh, we're going to paint the place. Let's have some drinks. Um, and there's a sort of a center courtyard in this building, um, or more like where the, where the, the inside of the building, you can see all the other rooms in a center corridor. So it doesn't matter what floor you're on. If there's an opening between all the floors as where like the outside is, it's kind of like, did you guys watch that, uh, only murders in the building? Mm-mm. That, uh, I don't think so. I'm not familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a Steve Very Martin, good. Martin Short. Yeah. Okay. Uh, about a, people, they start making a podcast about murders and anyway, um, the the building is it's very similar to that building where mm-hmm. like there's a center courtyard that goes all the way through the building and then yeah. there's an outside. So it's designed much in that way. So, 
we'd spend our time in that center courtyard uh drinking and stuff or just hanging out but you know i wasn't drunk or anything um but we had the music playing in 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 my office in the office that was mine that i was currently painting and uh we're just out hanging out and i noticed that the um the music started skipping and this is like cds you know we had cds still so the music starts skipping and i'm like oh god i gotta go i gotta go change the cd it's skipping um so i start to walk back to the to the room that our doors are open and so we can hear the the radio and um and it, it starts to get louder now i don't mean louder like because i'm walking closer now to the radio the radio like actually increases in volume like yeah. as i'm walking towards it or around the same time and that for a second gets me kind of thrown off like what is happening you know it's skipping and now it's getting louder but in my mind i'm like i just got to turn this off this is mm -hmm. this is like it's getting crazy and uh i'm so imagine the door is on one corner of this square basically that that is the office room and on the opposite corner is where the radio is uh, and everything else is emptied out and the lights are on and everything so my mission is just to get from the front door to that back corner and just go diagonal across the room to turn off the radio to the cd player um and as i walk into the room and it's getting loud so i'm, I'm it's a little bit like unnerving and but as i get closer and i'm I'm walking kind of at a fast pace because you know i'm like i gotta turn this off as i get closer towards the center i feel the room get colder like seriously like people say it all the time but like it mm -hmm. gets colder like i don't know if i get colder but the you know what i'm saying that the the, amb mm -hmm. the ambience gets mm -hmm. colder and like you were saying seth is now this the lights were on, but it was as if something in the center of the room, something was in the center of the room, and I didn't know what it was, and it started to freak me out. Now this is like just seconds. I'm just describing it kind of like in slow motion. Yeah. Um, I could feel that there was something in the center of the room, and it, and as I'm walking towards it, it kind of almost seemed like a ball like the, the the density of it was almost like a ball floating i didn't see a ball floating but it it was almost as if there was a, a density in the center that was emanating this feeling that this thing was there um and so i'm what i so i'm just i'm getting i gotta go turn off this cd player and as i go through this center point um it shouts like hey and i could almost at that moment sense the person there with their hands up now i could tell it was a woman the the sound and like the the feeling that is put off was like of a woman saying like hey and i passed right through it and and it felt like you know you get punched in the stomach and you get the wind knocked out of you yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that's how it felt. I got the wind knocked out of me and then I ended up like collapsing. Not collapsing like like I died or something, but like kind of yeah. falling into the wall, turning off the CD player, like trying to catch my breath. And that's um, crazy. Yeah. And I didn't know much about the building or anything, but I just remembered th that particular thing, right? So this is just me turning off the CD player and I'm like oh my god what the hell was that you know and just like you know like you said the goosebumps like cold it's like yeah. a cold uh when you get like flush like like a like cold rush over your body mm -hmm. you kind of like get like a shot of adrenaline and yeah. uh of course there's nothing in the room you know like i turn around there's nothing i didn't really see anything it was it was just like a flash of of, of a of a an idea that there was something there like you yeah. kind of see it and um <laughs> of course like i go back and tell everybody <laughs> yeah you know oh, i go God. back and i say dude i just i think i just walked through a ghost and 
you know, like it took a while to get people to listen to what I was saying, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, everyone's whatever, out. <laughs> yeah, everyone's out there drinking. And um but over time I got I got to know like the guy who uh operated the um elevator, he is like a, a like a first generation Cuban. Oh yeah. And uh so he had a a great accent and a great way about him and he uh, he would tell me. He's like, "Hey, we say Papito like, come, I'll show you. Come down. And he'll bring me down to the basement. And he's like, you see that that pipe there? That That is where he hung himself. That's where the owner hung Whoa. himself. Oh, my God. And, <laughs> and like, would tell me these, like, yeah, this place is haunted. Like, you know, like, because I would, I told him the story. And he's so like, no, yeah, it's haunted. It. <laughs> yeah, because uh, apparently it was like, there's so much that happened in this building. Like, at one point, it was like a, uh, like a, uh, for like, what's a better a brothel like a whorehouse yeah okay um during uh i believe probably during the second world war i think that's oh, when wow. it was doing that. that place got some action yeah yeah and um it was always a hotel at, at you know at, at some at, of for, for the most part and then and then it, now it's just it's an office building but um or you know mixed use and uh yeah he and and he would tell me, yeah, the, there's a little girl and there's a lady. So I think I saw the lady. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. But, that's what I was going to, I was going to ask was like, like he immediately said, Oh, this is where the guy hung himself, but you had the female presence. You, right. 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 You knew yeah. He would, presence, so. yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I, I know that for sure. I mean, at least as much as I know, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, what I'm, I, I kind of told the story of what he told me backwards. You know, he, he, he was just more or less agreeing with me and trying to, um, oh yeah, yeah, this happens. You know, oh yeah, you hear about this, and it, you know, it had this, this, the hallway in this place. There was a little red exit sign by the bathrooms. I don't even know if it was an exit <laughs> by the bathrooms, but for some reason, the end of the hall was like a red light. Yeah, and so at night you couldn't control the the lights in the hallway. So if we were there past the, the building hours and we were working on stuff, it'd be dark outside the hall. And it was one of those things, man, you walk down the hall and it would like warp. It was the craziest thing. I don't oh, know if it's just like an old building, but it yeah. would just feel weird. As it's you not up to code. <laughs> yeah. That might be, that might be what it is. <laughs> um, but yeah. Long, and you know, and just like to, I had some co cooperators, like other people that I knew that were renting, um, one one guy really like kind of in, in touch with this kind of stuff to the point where you're like are you serious like yeah he said he like saw the lady and he saw the little girl like he was sleeping there one night and a lot, a lot of people would like kind of like live there even though they weren't supposed to mm -hmm. and uh, he said he woke up and then there she was just sitting in his room standing in his room and i was like wow but um I never saw, Man, saw anything. I wish I wish I had like an experience like that. All I have is the shadow. I wish mm -hmm. I had like this very uh, definable thing. Vivid, yeah. Yeah, I just don't. I don't see well, anything. You, I, you know, there's a part of me though that says, "How much of that did I put together?" Like, yeah, yeah. You know, like I, if I walked into the room and the the, the music and the skipping of the right, the radio was acting abnormally. Did I like? start to freak out and maybe was that like my first experience with like a panic attack mm. you know what i mean like i don't yeah. know how much of that was just me embodying my fear but yeah, well, I like mean, i was said it, i wasn't was it, was it an intimidating environment no like, that's what i'm saying like it was i wasn't scared i wasn't like feeling spooked yeah. before i walked in the room but mm. I, it became like more like rapidly more and more yeah it just got of amped up really quick yeah 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 <laughs> That's but yeah so i mean there's a lot of ghost stories out here because of uh, all the um i just never experienced any of them you know like there's yeah. tales of old princesses getting slain at some mm -hmm. pond and that's why the the river turns red the little pond turns red but it's actually like a shrimp that um appears in the yeah. Yeah. the water but um things like that there's like we have kind of like a, a leprechaun kind of characters we have the menahune they're um 
yeah anyway <laughs> oh, so it. yeah yeah that that's was my a, only real one. experience yeah yeah, no. yeah that's a really good one um yeah i the only um the only things i have on like i ha there's this book series that was called tales from old china tales from old canada tales mm -hmm. and they're really hard to get they're they were made in like 50s and 60s but there were like different editions that were later reprinted i have a few of them they're hard to track down um but i have uh one tales of hawaii and now i'm just wanting to start looking in that book now i wonder if well, i wonder if i've read that or seen it you know like th that's probably if you go through that the tales of hawaii you'll probably come like know exactly what i'm talking about with all this stuff okay. now because they most of the stuff I'm talking about is it's not like esoteric. It's like kind of mm -hmm. like everybody like has some yeah. sort of story. I've heard the stories, but I just, <laughs> yeah. That's what's interesting about Hawaii. Hawaii is like out there, like in the Pacific. And, uh, you know, I know the theories of like Easter, Easter Island, which is even more remote. What, what, uh, what's the general, um, like hard line. This is how people got here like originally what's the, like, oh, for the historical takeaway yeah uh there was two camps and i think those camps have like converged um one camp would say uh south america okay and, and then the other camp would say like indonesia like you know uh, southeast asia yeah that makes more and, sense to me yeah, yeah. um Mostly. but yeah i don't know what like which it's hard to say which one like where the language comes from because the language across polynesia is is almost identical mm -hmm. um you could almost say it's the same language practically it's just like the some you just swap out with some of the words like mm -hmm. um a good example would be like uh aloha is like one of the main you know like a pretty popular word so that's mm -hmm. the Hawaiian. Uh, Talofa, uh, I think, is the Samoan and or the. A lot of the, a lot of the Micronesian like yeah, just translate yeah. immediately to Hawaii. Yeah, exactly that as well. Yeah, the Micronesian, and yeah, um, yeah. So a lot of them, just a few letters off in in the pronunciation, and and then that that um, letter change is um pretty much universal through the languages so um yeah it's kind of converged like maybe there's a little bit of both yeah um Interesting. but yeah certainly certainly uh there was very little um what do you call it? like the period the periods of like where things stayed the same between the islands is um pretty short so that there's a, a cultural mixing constantly between all the all the Pacific Islands, um, on a, like a, on a long time frame. You know, there's which a will lot of bring us to a future episode on bio <laughs> biogeographical lines. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. See? yeah we got we got a few things that's queued. That's a that's a future one. So, that's oh yeah, you want to be a part thing. of that? How is that? I I don't. What is what is that actually? So biogeographical lines are basically um. There are places where certain species of animals do not cross. Like it's 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 like a definitive line. So think about it like if you look at Indonesia, um, uh, specifically Malaysia, the Wallace line, like uh, between Australia and Indonesia, you have elephants and tigers and like these big mammals uh, on one side, but then. Only 30 kilometers away, you have none of those. You have Komodo dragons. You have different birds, uh, like everything, aviary, mammal, marsupials. Everything is different. So that's why Australia seems so isolated and why all of their animals seem so weird is because there is a line, a definitive biogeographical line, where for some reason certain animals don't cross. And so this is, and this line is, can be traced along this Wallace line. Yeah. And it's, uh, sense. yeah. And it's like such a small line and they're trying to compare it to like tectonic plates and things like that. They're trying to make it make sense that animals just won't cross it because they 
have some kind of like seismic, you know, idea that they won't cross there. Mm. But it's also how we kind of have uh like, you know, biodiversity lines. Um uh like I said, I'm part Native American and I always talk about how it's weird that like where oh, the lines know. cross between like Eastern and Western Mississippi, like how diverse, like, like even in America, I mean, and granted America is a big land mass, but you can draw these lines everywhere where like certain, uh, like certain animals just won't cross. They just won't, Whoa. they won't populate in certain areas. They just don't cross it. And it's usually follows tectonic plates for some reasons. So. Yeah. I wonder if like we're already having the conversation because now now I'm thinking I there's an another thing that happened to me when I went to California. And, um, this was more like I, I woke up to like uh what seemed to be shadow characters like holding like that chest like you ever, you hear those stories where people like holding you down in bed. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, old hag. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, that's what it's called in the southeast is like hags. Uh, oh, okay. um, they call them, um, I mean, well, I mean, you can call them anything, you can call them succubus, incubus, you want to do it from a religious standpoint, but, um, hags, uh, it's what we do in like the Gola. Right. Uh, okay. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. cause I, I actually, I have like a little bit of native American blood, um, mm -hmm. from my dad's side. So my mom's, my mom is Hawaiian and, uh, my dad, my dad is, uh, from, California and uh, anyway um yeah I was over there and I woke up one morning and it was kind of like I I thought to myself th that they were like Native American spirits like dark like the dark shadows like long shadow people like hovering over me yeah. holding me down and they just like looked at me and I thought I was awake mm -hmm. um I'm not sure if I was awake but uh it seemed like maybe it was on the edge of being awake in a dream. And they looked at me and they said, what are you doing here? Like they recognized me or something. It was, uh, <laughs> that was kind of a trip, but that, I guess what I, why I brought that up and the, and you're talking about these lines is like, oh. do you ever think that, um, a place like has a stain, like has like a, because I'm thinking about this place where I was telling you the ghost story of in Chinatown. Um, it hasn't changed like in its character. Like the character of the place has remained the same, even though it's modernized. So that's where like people go down there and they party and they, uh, they get in over their heads and then some of them fall off, <laughs> you know, and then now they're, they're, uh, they're in a, like a bad situation where they're homeless and they're on drugs or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's like happens over and over and over again in that place in the yeah. you know and i wonder if like places end up like holding yes, a certain yeah. energy i'm messing with people when they get outside yeah it's similar yeah. to like uh what do they call it the um the foreign what, what's the foreign something syndrome like when people get to like people that visit a place they think mm. they're going to be excited to see like paris like and right. they, and then they freak out and they like like they can't take it like they see it and they like start freaking out and have like anxiety attacks and everything because it's like so outside yeah, of it's what like a shock. They're, yeah they're so outside of what they actually like are from and everything like that even if they're from a big city like you can be from new york or tokyo or you know somewhere like that you go to paris you see something and you're like oh and they just freak out so i, I think they call it like a something like foreign something syndrome yeah, I can't remember. Um, yeah. That's really weird that you bring that up. Um, I've been met this idea that, uh, like, I've 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 lived in Chicago, I've lived in uh, New York, and I absolutely hated those places. Um, I don't know if it's like developmentally or like I I don't want to get too woo woo, but like wherever you were conceived, like that place's mm -hmm. energy, you just are kind of tuned to it, for yeah. lack of a better word. Um, there, so what I won't say the actual like spot I'm at, but there's, there's this place I live and it's called something and I've always loved that place, uh, at like the, the 
nature, the hills, the, the all of the, just the whole thing just jives with me perfectly. Uh, cities, I cannot wait to get out of. Like, I can't stand them. The the constant grating buzzing that's just constantly in the air. Um, and that also that sense where there's a bunch of stuff around you that's not a, not asleep. Like, when it's your bedtime where you're supposed to be getting rest, there's, like, so much life going on in other places anyway but where i'm at there i was walking a a a lot that i may be managing at some point and the reason i bring it up is when i went there uh i would i felt like a kid again like it's it's very close to me and it's just a a raw lot of i would have like i i would have to be putting in like my version of infrastructure in it just to make it to where uh people can access certain points that are anyway um the i was there just touring it and this place had like some paths that um some local people would ride horses through and the rest of it was just like dense vegetation and i felt more giddy than i've ever felt in an extremely long time like i was uh I just felt like skipping, like, you know, like when you just want to like skip, Mm. like you're so cheerful, like that was like the vibe. And you mentioning all this, it's like, I want, I wonder if there's something to that. Like you're just kind of tuned to your, your place. I don't know. I I like the idea of it, but at the same time, I'm kind of terrified of it because I love travel. (laughs) Yeah, I know. (laughs) I love, I love traveling. So it's like, uh, it does make me kind of scared that. I can't just relocate anywhere. Yeah, yeah, you you go you go somewhere and then the shining oh, yeah. happens to you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I wouldn't want that. But at the same time, I, I I don't know. Yeah, I think there might be some geographical lines that we're kind of attuned to. So yeah, you mean they ate each other? Yeah, <laughs> they they ate each other. The Donner part. I forget the lines. I, I've been butchering. <laughs> I've been quoting The Shining recently, but I haven't seen it in a minute, so I'm butchering it. Well, like, uh, what's the dude's name? The caretaker, the guy that uh, was also had the the Shinnin. Um, uh, oh, the, I forget his the, name. The Butler the, dude. Yeah, the Butler dude. Uh, uh, when he's talking to when he's talking to Danny in the kitchen, he's basically saying like, "Well, you know, when you burn a piece of oh no, that guy, that guy." Uh, okay. Yeah, he has a his real name is like Magruther. He has a really interesting last name. The actor. I thought we were uh, talking Mag- about the guy that was like the like I corrected her. No, 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 not that freak. No, no, no. The nice, <laughs> the nice black guy that took care of the manor, yeah. the nice. like he was like the caretaker, <laughs> the night, nice, the, the sweet the old man, man. <laughs> with the with the with the naked chicks over his bed. That was like my yeah. favorite part. He had all these like, uh, uh, just just chicks all over his wall and his. I believe he lived in Florida. Is that where he lived? Like in the movie, he was like back in Florida, and then Danny called him with the shining. Uh, but anyway he uh yeah he he was he was talking about how places like like their energy sticks on like whatever happens in a place it's like burning toast you can still smell it even though it's it's not occurring right now that's it i don't know if that relates to the the lines you're talking about but i think uh, i feel like we're getting down i feel like we're coming up with our own theory here slowly (laughs) Yeah, we yeah we got off burnt off toast theory. At the same time, kind of on topic, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's a first. Good, smooth. Um, <laughs> I've got uh, I've got the mimic story to tell to end it all. Oh. All right, so mimic story, which is my favorite uh, ghost story I have personally. And it does not happen when I was actually giving ghost stories in Charleston. It actually comes from my hometown where I was born. Um, I was actually born in a city called Augusta, Georgia, where the home of the Masters is. Um, and I was born on Ray's Creek. Uh, I say born, raised there in a house on Ray's Creek, which is, runs through the national, uh, the Augusta National Golf Course. So everybody's like, ah, oh, it's crazy. It's the biggest golf tournament in the world, all that kind of stuff. But, um, But I had no clue about, like, any of the history other than what my dad told me. And he said, well, you know, Native American settlements here and things like that. And um, 
So I thought that was cool, and uh, and we would dig and do metal detecting and things like that around my house. Um, but I grew up in a tri-level house, so to describe it to you, the bottom level is basically the land is graded up like a slope. So mm-hmm. the bottom area was like an entertainment area, and then you had a den and then you had stairs that went up to a foyer and a kitchen. And then you had another set of stairs that went up to all the bedrooms. So it's a tri-level house, but it's not like it's not like a three-story house. It's just a tri-level way the land grades. Um, mm-hmm. And that's important because um, all of my time spent as a kid would have been in the den... And then looking back down this hallway towards the back room, which would have gone towards our back house. So the I always called it the back room. It was I don't know what you would call it because it's like yeah. the it's the offshoot room, the farthest out, lowest place in the house that goes to the backyard. It's where the hot water heater was. It's where like our you know like freezer was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, kind of, but it's not below ground. Um, it's still above ground, but it's it kind of like the cellar. Uh, and we put like TVs and like video game systems back there. It was like where you would go back to play games and stuff. Um, and then you would come back to the den through that hallway, and that's like more of a general family room kind of thing. And then when you go upstairs, that's where, like I said, the foyer and the kitchen all is. So, give you an idea of that. So, that back room at night always gave me the creeps. Like it was a really dark, weird, weird room that just, it just never felt right. And I never wanted to be there, uh, during the night. And even when I would be in the den, because I was a kid, I'd want to, that's where I was watching TV and stuff. I could look through that hallway to that room and always felt really uncomfortable. I never wanted to shut the door. I felt like if I shut the door, bad things would happen. So I keep it open. Mm -hmm. Um, And you just look into that void. It would be just a dark, dark room. Um, It always creeped me out. And I I, I just can't really have a a emotion to really put into it. But getting older, what happened was would start uh, seeing people or hearing voices of my family members that would come about. So I lived with my mom, my dad, my grandmother, and my sister, my older sister. So she was like three years older than me. Um, where upstairs, all of our bedrooms were upstairs in that top part. And you'd have to like walk across that hallway and you would never not be in a like eye view of anyone's bedroom. Like if you had to walk to the bathroom, mm-hmm. you would walk in front of somebody's door. Somebody would see you basically. So, uh, okay. after my sister graduated and went to college and she left, I moved out of my bedroom into her bedroom because it was a bigger room. Uh, and then my dad kind of made my old bedroom his, like, office room. So now we have it really where it's, like, it's just me, grandmother, dad, and then, like, the master bedroom. So, like, I can't walk anywhere without being seen. I'm going anywhere upstairs. Um, so this is my junior year of high school. I'm 17. and uh, I get up and I walk to the bedroom. Uh, I walk to the bathroom basically. And, um, my dad is supposed to be in his office doing stuff and I see him walk to the bathroom come back. And then he's not in the office when I walk back. So I walk back and I walk into his room and I'm, I look and he's not there. I'm like, okay, cool. 
So I walk into the master bedroom thinking he's in there doing something. My mom is at work, by the way. My mom is a registered nurse at this point. My dad's retired. Um, uh, walk in the bedroom. He's not there. He's not in the bathroom. And I'm like, okay, where's he? Um, so I had just walked past going to the bedroom and saw him sitting at his desk at the computer. Uh, I call him on the cell phone and I'm like, he answers and I'm like, Hey, I was like, where are you at? Are you in the backyard or something? And he's like, no, I'm, I'm at Kroger. <laughs> he was at the oh, grocery weird. store. Weird. It's like, you were just sitting at your computer and just walked past you. He says, no. It's like, so scary. <laughs> gets worse. <laughs> so that was the first thing to go back. Uh, now, um, this is at a point uh, a little bit later. Uh, I'm 18 now. I just turned 18, but I'm still in high school. I'm a senior. Um, in my room, I'm sitting at my desk. My mom went to the grocery store. So I know she went to the grocery store. I know she's gone. My dad is not home. My mom is not home. My grandmother is not home. She's dead at this point, actually. Uh, she died at 98. Uh, she's gone. So there's nobody in the house but me. My mom notoriously is loud. <laughs> she, she'll be like, hey, hi. Yeah. So um, I'm sitting at my desk, literally on my computer, sitting here in my bedroom. And I hear the garage door open. So I told you I had a tri-level house. So the mid-level had a garage. That's where the cars go. Garage opens, they come in through a back door through the middle of the house, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I hear the garage door opening, and I hear the back door open, like, very audibly. There's a screen door that has to be pulled open. There's a back door that has to be pushed open. And then my mom says, hey, I need help. That's her wanting groceries, you know. I, I need to come help her get groceries in very audibly hear, hey, I need help. And I'm obviously, as a teenager, I'm annoyed. And I'm like, I'm coming. And I oh, mom. Skip, skip down the stairs. Skip down the stairs. Immediately hit the, hit the middle of the foyer and look. And there's a closed door. The back door. I walk Weird. up to it. Garage door is closed when I look out the window of that door. Door is closed, locked. Uh, garage door is closed. Um, yeah. No car, nothing. No, 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 no. She, she didn't pull the car into the garage. That's not a thing. Like they pull into yeah. the driveway. Garage door, yeah. The garage is for different cars. But <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it's closed. There's nothing. That door is closed. Everything. And I, I mean, I skipped down the stairs. Like, hey, here I am. I'm, I'm your 17-year-old son, all spry, ready to pull groceries in. Nothing. And I mean, I very audibly heard her say, hello, need help. And it was in my mom's room. So strange. It's like giving me goosebumps right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it gets weirder. <laughs> this is all my stuff, by the way. I haven't even told you when my family starts to tell me their stuff. <laughs> oh, man. So, this is all my perspective. So, that happened. I was weirded out by that and just went back up the stairs and went about my business. And I was like, okay. I, I mean, I'm going crazy. I very audibly heard my mom's voice asking me to help bring groceries in. So, um, I now fast forward to like we're eating dinner. And I think I can't remember if this was like a Thanksgiving or something. We're actually at my dinner and I tell them this for the first time. Um they were just like, We've seen you walk like across the hallway when you weren't home. No. I was like, stop. I was like, really stop. This is Have you stupid. ever checked to see if your house was like on a ley line? Like what what is going on? Like there's a mimic for all of you. you. 
I don't know. <laughs> but everybody had seen everybody. And my grandmother, who was dead, we I saw my grandmother walk by when she was still alive. But I'd seen her walk by when I knew she couldn't walk because she was, like, unable to. Like, she was basically right. in hospital at that point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was it was it's almost like there was an entity that just could embody a voice oh, so or a you're, person. Oh, yeah. So that's you're saying you're saying you're saying one mimic was mimicking everyone, yeah, not necessarily everyone. like a family of mimics. Yeah. No, okay. no, no. Yeah. I think it's one mimic that could just embody everyone that was in that house. They they just could somehow be that person. Uh the only person I have never physically seen it wasn't there it was my sister um and I, I and i've never heard her voice either but she has said that she's seen me and heard my voice she's there that is so strange dude i would check to see i would like go on like a ley line map i would like do some research on that location or like is there any uh uh local like stuff like this like stories from the past the only thing I know about where my where that house is is it's on where um, Civil War camps were set and also Native American. Uh, oh, the stuff I showed too... you, uh, you know, I showed you all the, the 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 stuff I showed you that was the Cherokee artifacts I have is all from yeah 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 my family land and everything. So that's all I know. Yeah. That's, now, I mean, this that's an weirder. intense story. Um, my cousin... <laughs> it gets weirder? Uh, well, it gets, <laughs> me it's weird is because my cousin, who is who is like straight up Native American, she's like got all the all the blood. <laughs> yeah. I'm 34%. She's like all the blood Cherokee. Yeah. She said that every time she came to the house, she felt weird in that back room. She said that back room was like really fucking weird to her. That it messed with her. Man, and, yeah, she said that she never felt right, and uh, I, I have that in text messages. I can like share that because I, uh, when I, yeah, crazy, so you powerful, know what this, whatever's there, yeah, I that it reminds me of uh, what's that Stephen King, The Stranger, it reminds me of that mimic. Oh, wait, what, what was, am I saying the name right? I, I don't remember that one, but. It it was a show, and the dude from uh, the dude from Ozarks and Arrested Development was the main character. Uh, yeah, I think it was a stranger. Anyway, it, it, what you're describing is so similar. It would it would take the form on of of like an individual, like one at a time, and yeah. it's just unnerving. It's just like the whole show is unnerving. Yeah, like I said, there was never anything. I, I never felt any malice. and It was just a sense of dread. Didn't like that back room. That back room always scared me. It just made me feel uncomfortable. And especially when at night, when the sun went down, I just, I didn't want anything to do with that. How back big room. was that room? Um, I mean, it's like a, I, I don't know how to do like a. I mean, like 20 by 20, like, are we talking like a square room, a long room? Square room, but it also had had an offshoot with a freezer and a um oh, yeah. back room where the hot water heater was and everything. Okay. So, and that was built because you said that the, it was graded. So is it like one of those houses where if you're outside on the lawn, you can walk down to like the 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 sub part of the house and then you yeah, walk up, not, you know what I mean? You wouldn't even you wouldn't even it's a tri level house, you wouldn't even realize that it's you wouldn't even realize you were doing elevation. Like, yeah, it makes sense. Like the flat part, like mm -hmm. um, the outer third was that room, that back room, the scary room, I guess you could say, and then the den, and then you went up five stairs, and then you're in a foyer and a kitchen, and then you went up yeah. ten stairs, and you're in all the bedrooms. Yeah. So like, okay, okay, the, um, the grading of the grading is basically there's a creek so there's creek water right this and then like everything just kind of gradually graded up and the back room this back room was like a sub room it was down at the it's still, lower, it's, still flat, though. it's still above level it's still above okay okay it's not that's what i was trying to picture i was like it's i wonder not, if it's, it's cut a, it's in low ground 
I got it's you. not like a basement. It's not below ground at all. It's you're above the ground still. Okay, I got you, dude. That's weird. <laughs> that's a good so one. Freaky. Jeez. Yeah, you you need to make like a short story out of that. That's just that's just uh yeah, it's it's uncomfortable. <laughs> and it was really weird, and especially it got even weirder because when my grandmother, um, when she she stayed with us uh all the way until basically her death, um. Mm-hmm. She was very cognizant all the way in her nineties. Um, yeah. like she was my babysitter basically when I was young. Um, she died at 98 and when she was in her later years, they, uh, they started saying she was having dementia and I get it. She mm-hmm. was having dementia. It was weird because I would come in there and she would tell me she, I would bring her food. I'd bring her lunch and everything like that. I'd be like, Hey, here you go. She would say, "Hey, where's the other guy?" I was like, "Who are you?" No. Talking about? See, oh it's weird God. when the dementia lines up with your mm-hmm. story. It gets really fucking weird. She would say, "She goes, who? Where's the other guy?" And I said, "Who are you talking about?" She's like, "You know, where's Clark?" I was like, "I'm Clark." She's like, "No, the other where's, Clark." Yeah. Oh my God. No, Clark. <laughs> Now, at this time, I was traveling, I was in the band, so I had different hairstyles and stuff, so I kind of chalked it up to that, where I was like, okay, you're just thinking, you just don't recognize me. Right. You know, you just think, and she was very adamant. She's like, no. She's like, you're Clark, where's the other guy? And I was like, well, everybody hey. else has these stories. And I was like, I don't, I don't know. And then me and my dad look really similar, but my dad's 36 mm-hmm. years old than me so i was thinking maybe yeah. she's mixing me and my dad up yeah but like i don't know like it was so weird she she was adamant about it when i would come in there and give her lunch sometimes she would say you know thank you and then sometimes she would say where's the other guy now i, I so I, weird and it happened multiple times like it was not just yeah, oh, one yeah. Mul- instance mul- multiple people multiple, multiple times. times and it was in that oh, house my God. It was in that house, in like one of those bedrooms up above it, <laughs> above that weird, Dude, creepy room. And what she if, just what she if, would say, well, "Yeah." What if what if there was like a, a like a uh, an episode? We just call it uh, uh, the the Clark Files, and you go <laughs> and you interview whoever lives there now, and just asking them, just take like a Zoom recording and be like, yes. I, "I used to live here, and I was wondering." I, if you had any strange oh, experiences, I actually ha- we still own the house. I can go there. Oh my god! Are the, do you know the people you that are, are in it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. My mom and dad still own it. They live there. Oh, 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 oh! oh gotcha. Oh, I thought mind. you were like leasing it to someone. I, no, 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 no. I can go there and any time, and I I can walk through that house and show you exactly the layout and where that the weird be, stuff. Happens. Dude, that would be yes. a great YouTube video. <laughs> Oh, I'll do Field it. trip. <laughs> um, dude, yeah, yeah. My vote. You should do that. That would be incredible. <laughs> uh, it's, it's... well, that's unnerving. Um, I'm gonna. What a way to to end on. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, I, I, I. You know what? What the most unnerving is? It's like, um, your family, like your family and your friends, like you trust them. They're like a safe space. Mm-hmm. But when if there's something like that can can mimic them that just undermines the whole thing yeah and it touches that uncanny valley where you can't trust yeah. anything Ugh. oh my god yeah all right and well, that so is weird a... that we all saw each other like and it right? didn't yeah. take forever it took forever like i i said all this happened when i was like 17 18 and it took me to go to college be away come back everything before we all like were sitting down at a dinner and like told these stories and they they all were like yeah we saw you when you weren't here like, oh God, <laughs> like that's so it, that's it so made, messed up yeah, it really just brought it home for me where i was like wow i'm not crazy like <laughs> so so these are like brief encounters like it's like something passing by a door so it's not like you can like go wait a minute and like run down yeah it's like, like visual, it's like you see it yeah someone walked past the doorway and then you go to the bathroom and there there's no one there. And then no, voices, no, no, no. someone calling out to you saying, Hey, I get help here. And then you go down and there's nobody there. Like it was, it was, it was, 
It was audible. It was visual. Oh, that's so creepy. That's a, such a good one, but I, I don't like it at the same time. Yeah, I won't be able to sleep tonight for real. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'm a skeptic. I don't. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. those movies. Oh, I know you are. I don't really <laughs> believe them. You, you, you definitely don't indulge. <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's definitely what I lived in that house. So it's just strange. It's like that. It's, it's like that, that lady I was telling you that saw Bill pass mm -hmm. down the end of the hall and go into the room and that nobody would be in the room. Like it, those kind of things are like, uh, where I've heard like multiple people say these things and like, there's no incentive. It's not like these people are get benefiting. It's just, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just odd to hear like recurring things line up like what you're saying. Yeah. Well, that was a, that was a way to end the podcast. That was, right? a, <laughs> that was a fireworks at the end. Yeah. I wish, I wish uh, Joe was here for that. <laughs> what if he had like a similar story? Uh huh. Yeah. Well, we can it always also, do it. Also a, makes a it also makes it for my cousins. My cousins that visit, like, they're the ones that really seal it for me, too. Because they, like, when I told this story finally after years and years and years, and I told it on my um my former podcast, uh, they came out and they were like, We hated that room. We were always creeped out by wow. that room. What? And they came out and told me that. That was when I was really weirded, like weirded out. And I was like, okay, there's something to this. I'm not just crazy. Cause, yeah. Because me, my immediate family, we're all very, like, we're all very, like, I guess, stoic minded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're, you know, we'll, we'll try to logically figure out something. Like, we'll be like, okay, that was weird. Maybe I'm just crazy or something psychological. But when, like, my cousins that had, you know, like, they only visited very little, like, when they came in. And they're very, uh, also, I guess, logical, but at the same time, they're very attuned people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That When they were just like, yeah, we hated that back room. We did not like being around. Like, we didn't even like being in. That's what it was for me when I was, like, growing up as, like, as a kid. When I was in the den, looking down that hallway to that back room that went to the back door, it was it was always scary. Like that was a scary room at night for some reason. So like I don't know uh, what it was that was there, but like the fact that my cousins and my cousins are ten plus years older than me. Yeah. When they visited, they were already older than me. I was a kid, you know. So it's yeah. like every time they were over, like them like reaffirming that to me. And I'm in my thirties. <laughs> they're yeah, saying, like they're, they're yeah. adults. They're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're 40. They're in their forties now. And they were like, that back room was scary. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm not crazy. <laughs> Weird. That is so creepy. Yeah, I, don't, I don't really know how to follow up on that. That was a right? good one. I, I you, you, sh you should, you should like, uh, I don't know. That should, that should be, you should uh, collab with uh, uh, Joe and like do it, do a zine of, of that. He'll like do the illustrations. That's crazy. Um, well, any, any final closing thoughts other than we're, we're, we're all doomed. Um, I don't know why I'm such a anti-magnet, I guess, <laughs> with paranormal uh, apparition. I've, yeah, no, I, I've never experienced anything. So, hey, I'm right here. So just let me know, you know, just <laughs> let's make something happen. <laughs> yeah, I've only had the one. I'm I'm mm -hmm. like, even though it's not like I want like the memory of the man right. sitting yeah. in a corner of my room smoking. I don't necessarily want that kind of baggage. But at the same time, I wish I wish I I don't know. I want something. I want something more than my shadow, man. <laughs> oh. I, I, it's like when you talk about this stuff, things start ringing bells, but like, I really don't have mm -hmm. any other stories, like nothing, nothing crazy that happened to me. Just, I had friends that were terrified of the house I grew up in, but like, I never felt that outside of that one instance. Yeah. And then there was a second instance, but there was a guy knocking on the door. My parents were gone and I, I loaded up my paintball gun with like uh marbles. And oh. I was like, I was like checking out the windows. Uh -huh. I didn't know who it was. I'm pretty sure I'd seen uh, 
one of the newer uh, Home Alones at that point. So I was like, <laughs> I was making my plans. But yeah, it was just a dude. I think I know who it was too. It was it was it was a it was a yeah I won't get into it. It was it, yeah it was just a guy <laughs> that it was a guy that like kind of made enemies with uh, my folks. Uh, a falling out of sorts and wow. uh, i think he was just coming by to apologize <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and i was like i was like uh i was like i was ready to home alone it but... <laughs> he got this close to going back home with his ass loaded with marbles so <laughs> yeah yeah I, I used to have a game when i was a kid where there's like this uh there's this banister like the stairwell goes up in in sections mm -hmm. And there's this one odd stairwell that goes off to nothing because it used to be a, a porch. Like it goes off into that hall that I was telling you about. Um, but it, it in back in the day when the house was designed the way it was, it was some kind of a upper porch. So technically there's three levels of staircases, even though it's a two story. Mm -hmm. And um, so I would, I, my dad would like, you know, get his water and everything and go to bed. Like uh, he would walk up the stairs and so I had this thing where I would like stack uh, empty uh, uh, like the toilet paper roll tube and yeah. like have like and then like wait for him and like have all these things that would like trip and and like, you know, <laughs> cave in on him. And uh, and and but one time it got too serious because I had like too many like uh, hard objects that fell on him and he put an end to that game quickly. <laughs> but. He got pretty good at it. He was he he made uh he started making scarecrows. He would like get a broom and put like a, a like a jacket over it and uh -huh. then like trip my my system by like like <laughs> getting it over yeah. the steps. So he got we, we were we were both we, I feel like we were equally matched and then I just took it too far. But, That's adorable. <laughs> but uh but anyway, well Thanks, uh, thanks, thanks to Joe for coming on the podcast. Uh, thanks, mm -hmm. Clark and Lily. This has been fun. Yeah, um, it was very spooky. I know there was a huge, like, I know we've been hearing from Alex in his uh, bungalow. He he got a, a a decent setup to where you know he could he could reach us from his South America area that he's that he's in. Uh, there was some weather or something happened and, mm. and he lost his link. So he's, he's, he's busy trying to get that. Hopefully he'll be on next week, but it's, it's kind of, it's kind of dicey down there, but anyway, death endorses. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, we possibly have a big, uh, liquid death deal coming down the mm -hmm. pipeline. So look out for that. Look out it for is. some endorses. Yeah, it's going to be like a nice logo, like a nice uh, that stuff and weird triangle on the side of it. It'll be good. And Ridge Wallet. Don't forget Ridge, Ridge oh, Wallet. Oh, of course, of course. Today's of course. episode oh, brought yes. to you by Ridge. <laughs> Ridge Shadow Legends. <laughs> yeah, Shadow Legends. I, those those commercials. So they're... Uh, I will, I'll, never mind. I'll, 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 this is an off-air conversation. But um, thanks for tuning in. And remember, we don't want stuff that's normal. We want stuff that's effing weird. <laughs>